Do you want to accept that behavior? You go right ahead. I'm not going to accept that behavior. You accept that, it's going to keep escalating, keep getting worse. And you're setting that horse up to end up in a kill pen. Or be here with me for getting it fixed. Do not accept that behavior. I've had some halter horses in recently that moved like halter horses. Weren't really great maneuver movers. And he is halter bred on one side, and I think he's a little bit more working bred on the other side. And you'll be able to see the difference in how he moves related to the other halter horses. He is a better mover. It's a car. Let me get over that. Apparently we haven't ridden him much out here in traffic. He is a better mover than most of the other halters. And he's a little bit more athletic. So mixing in those other performance lines have really helped him. He's got a different mind. He has a performance horse kind of mind, even though he has a couple of halter horse lines. And he moves better. He's a little more athletic than the other halter horses. So we're going to see how far we can get him in reining, cow work, uh, ranch type work, ranch trail, ranch riding. See what we can do with him. See how far we can carry him. Uh, I think every horse deserves the opportunity to be as good as he can be, and we're going to see what we can get. This is the first time that I have ridden him in a leverage bit. The first time he's been ridden in a leverage bit. Up until today, we've been, had him in nothing but snaffle bits, working on some lateral, working on some softness. When he first came, he was a little harder on our right hand. Right hand, right side was stiffer. So we used that snaffle bit to kind of even out his lateral softness. Now today I'm adding a little bit of pole pressure, I'm adding a little bit of chin pressure, working on a little bit more roundness through his body. So I'm just asking him to kind of give to the bit and I'm asking him to move forward with my legs. A little bit of tap with my calves, I do have my spurs on, I'll use them if I need to, but for the most part he just moves forward off of leg. I'll ask him a little bit with my spur to kind of pick his shoulder up, move over right there. It's kind of pulling on my left hand. So there, a little bit of push with my left spur, get him off my left hand. And you notice he bent to the left, and I never moved my left hand. That was all my left spur getting his head to come over to the left. In that situation, I want the head to the left, but I fix the head by moving the middle this way. And in the process of doing that, I'm getting the body control and the roundness that I'm really wanting to build on. I can just pull his head to the left and his head will come, but it's the body control. That's where we're at now with this leverage bit. Back left, left spur, get his head to the left. There we go. So he's trying to figure out what to do with that pressure. When I just turn left, that is the first time he's ever felt left rein contact on a leverage bit. This bit that I have him in is just my little my little low port, triangle port. It's one of the bits that I normally start him in. He spooked at the last car that went by. Let's see what happens with this one. He hears it coming. Let's just sit here. And we'll go forward. I think he's getting over that. I don't know why he was worried about traffic out here. I'm sure most of our riding has been in the covered arena, but we've ridden him out here. But anyways, getting his body moving. While I'm doing this, I'm going to talk a little bit about the split reins that I use. I only ride in leather split reins, and you can get split reins in different lengths and different widths. All of my split reins are around the six and a half, seven foot length. You don't want your end of your reins to be here. That's going to create the, this end going to the bit is going to be heavier than the tail that's hanging down. You want a pretty good balance. All of my reins are weighted on the ends. So this end down here is actually wider. It's almost square than up here. And what that does, when I hold the rein this way, I'm feeling probably three times as much weight here as what I'm feeling going to the bit when I have a slack rein. So by doing that, when I make contact with the horse's mouth like this, I have a pretty balanced weight 
this weight here is pretty equal to the weight that's going to the horse's mouth. So it gives me a good balanced feel. When I have horses like him that are a little greener in the bridle, I'll go with a thicker rein. I believe this one is 5 8 A little bit wider, only because it gives me a little... Let's keep going forward. Keep going forward. Keep going forward. Only because it gives me a little wider rein to kind of hold on to. If I need to pull a little harder, it gives me a little more to hold on to. As my horses advance, I'll go to a, a smaller rein. I'll go down to about a 3 8 half inch, 3 8 depending on the horse. That makes the rein a little softer. It's uh, I don't have as much to hold on to if I'm wanting to pull hard but it gives me a little softer more finesse control in the horse's mouth and again those are all weighted on the ends too a little bit of needs to give his head to the left a little better keep going keep going keep going keep going i'm bumping pretty good with my spurs here needs to keep walking this horse came in with a really good stop, but the problem with that stop was, is he was stopping with any pressure. And when we'd go to get him round, get him soft, he was stopping. So that's a, right there, that's where we need to get him to round off the bit. Long as my body is saying go, he needs to go, even if I have rain contact. Now I can ask him to, let's keep going. I can ask him to stop, by not sending him forward and my, my reins never changed. That's all getting him to tune into my body. My body is what I want him to listen to. My body's going to say go. My body's going to say stop. My body's going to say move right. My body will say move left. That's all getting him to tune into that. Let's ask for a step around to the left. A little bit of right rein. Right leg. Bring his shoulders over. Shoulders over, shoulders over. He's looking at those horses right there. This horse is kind of spoiled when he came in. And part of being spoiled is he wants to kind of do his thing. He wants to look where he wants to look. And nothing wrong with spoiling your horse. But when it's time to do a job, you need to do a job. No different than a person. Nothing wrong with taking care of yourself and, and spoiling yourself. But when it's time to go to work, it's time to go to work. So he has had to learn the time to go to work part. Let's go to work. Let's walk him over these boards. There we go. Kind of stumbled across in the back. So let's ask for a little bit of trot. Let's see, let's go back to the right since that was his better direction. A little more forward, a little more. There we go, get off the bit. I'm just kind of setting my hands and letting him figure out where to find to get off of that contact. Right there, he's kind of pulling on my hands. He's trying to get me to give him slack. I'm not going to give him slack. I'm just going to set my hands and let him figure where to get off of it and I'm going to help him with that with my legs right here he's kind of pulling his head to the left I'm going to use a little bit of right leg and also a little bit of left leg to send him forward there we go my hands are always right up here in front I'll never be pulling down and towards my thighs always right here that keeps the horse centered between my legs he has got his shoulders going off to the left I had a little bit of left leg I never changed my hands move his body steer his body off of my legs i've got to have that to have everything that we're going to have in the future all right now we're going to change directions go to the left this is the one he was struggling with a little bit of the walk probably going to take a little bit more left hand a little bit more left leg bend to the left there we go bend to the left and you notice while he's trotting, he's moving a good bit different than those other halter horses that I've had. He's more athletic than those other ones. Actually has a little bit more of a 
want to go do something mine too. I see so many people buying horses and they buy what's big and pretty. And they end up with halter horses. I guess halter horse business is a good business to be in right now. But so many halter horses. And I'm sure I'm going to get some comments. Oh, I got this halter horse and I can rope off of him and I can work cows and all that. There are exceptions. But that's not the rule. You're going to go through a bunch of halter horses that can't hardly move forward before you find one that's really athletic. So big and pretty is big and pretty don't count on it being able to do it much there are exceptions i think he might be one of them they are typically not very athletic see how he kind of hollered out his back trying to get his back feet picked up over the log let's go over it again the left which is this harder direction get him around and i normally would push my hands forward going over the log Keep going, keep going, keep going. But by asking him to keep collecting, keep his back round, and go over the log, forces him to use the back end more. And he kind of got his nose out. That wasn't as good. Let's go around and do it again. Uh uh. He wanted to fuss about my spurs there. Let's go forward. Go forward. There we go. See there, when I was bumping him, he rounded his neck and then went forward. That's progress. That's good. He rounded up, engaged forward. Give me your head. Give me your head. Give me your head. Give me your head. He needs to move his body off my legs a little bit better. There we go. See the pushing. Get off my spur, get off my spur, get off my spur. And no, you cannot get this done without spurs. Get those comments all the time. You're hurting a horse, cruel horse, cruel rider. Well, you can think you're getting it done without a spur, you're not getting it done. I don't care what you tell me. Oh, my horse did this. No, your horse didn't do that. He just don't really know what good is. Round off my left leg. <laughs> we kind of went down the board. He went that way. I let him go. I'm not going to let him steer away because what will happen is he'll be like, oh, if I go over here, you're going to give me my face. No, I'm not going to give you your face. You went over there. You figured it out. <laughs> give me your face. There we go. Give me your face. Give me your face. Keep going forward. I want the fuss again. Keep going forward. Now he's back. He's trying to throw a little temper tantrum here. I'm just going to keep asking to go forward. Then I get softer. <laughs> go back to the right for a minute. Left is the one he has a hard time with. We'll need to work that more. Pushing in to the left now. Left leg. Left rein. Left leg. Go forward. Nope. Now I'm going to bump on his face. I'm going to fuss out. That's not acceptable. You're not going to kick at my spurs. Now we're going to go forward. You want to do that, I'm going to make it uncomfortable. Go back to the right. Do you want to accept that behavior? You go right ahead. I'm not going to accept that behavior. You accept that, it's going to keep escalating, keep getting worse. And you're setting that horse up to end up in a kill pen. Or be here with me for getting it fixed. Do not accept that behavior. That horse wants to throw a temper tantrum. He ain't worried about you. You kick on him and you pull on him and you let him know that's not acceptable. So we're going to go on forward. Keep going forward. There we go. He came in a little bit spoiled and he's got a little bit of a price he's got to pay because of that. Develop some work ethic. He has the ability. I think he's got the mind. A horse that doesn't challenge doesn't have the mind to go excel. Because he will challenge, he's got the mind. He's got something to work with. But I need some discipline. Just like a person. 
He's not self-disciplined. He's not going to accomplish anything in life. Got to build that self-discipline. That's what we're doing. Give me some body control. Round your body. Use these muscles you're not used to using. Give me some self-discipline. Bend to the left. Right there, he's pushing on my left rein. Right here, he's trying to stop. He wants to complain again. There we go. Left bend. Go forward. Left bend. Go forward. Left bend. Left bend. Go forward. Left bend. Go forward. There we go. Now, I want to talk about something before I get off. There's something about... I don't you ended you went to it. It's not in my way. There's there's ending on a positive note. Now I'm not gonna stop with him with him pulling on my yeah, hand. He actually does really good to the right. This is mainly to the left. So I'm not gonna stop with him. I don't want to stop with a fight and him winning the fight. So what I'm gonna do when I get ready to stop with him is we're gonna go back to the right. Do a couple circles to the right, let him get soft to the right, and then we'll stop. I'm not going to stop going to the left, but I talked about this in a blog about ending on a positive note. If you have to look for a positive note to end on, you miss some stuff. There's a lot of good stuff in this horse, and all your training should be challenging higher reinforce lower so right here I'm challenging higher I'm not gonna stop on my challenge and higher that was actually pretty good let's go back to the right I'm not gonna stop challenging higher I'm gonna stop on my reinforcing what's already good so you shouldn't be looking for a positive note to stop on because that should be positive all throughout your training this is actually pretty nice So if you have to work to end on a positive note, a couple things is happening. Either you are not reinforcing what's good, you step the horse up, it's challenging the horse, that cloud of dust is between you and me. So I'm not in that cloud that's between us. So if you're challenging the horse a little bit higher, then bring him back down reinforcing what he's good at. That brings his confidence up. That encourages him to work a little bit harder. If you're not doing that, you're going to have a hard time finding a positive note to end on. If you're battling with your horse all the time, you're not going to find a positive note to end on. You should What you're doing with your horse should never be a battle. I set my hands, told him what I wanted, waiting for him to figure it out. We're not battling. I'm showing a position I'm, when I'm releasing when he finds it. There's no battle there. Think about that in your training program. Always end on a positive note, but you shouldn't have to look for that positive note to end on. So this is Woody. I'll put a link up to his, up here to his other videos on YouTube. I don't think we've done but one or two. It hadn't been many. Until next time, thank you for watching.